Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1443. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, either the start file or finish file so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to see how to create a DAX formula for calculating sales per working day. And of course, since it's DAX, it'll work in Power Pivot or Power BI Desktop. Now, if we go over to 1404, I already did an Excel magic trick on sales per working day for a three-year report. But there we did it with Excel formulas. Now, those Excel formulas are awesome and fun. And they'll work on small data sets or if you're not in Power BI Desktop. If you have big data or you want to do it in Power BI Desktop, then you need to do it with DAX. Now, here's our two data sets, same data sets as back in 1404. Sales table with order dates. And here's our date table. There's the dates. And here's a column telling us which of those days are work days. Now, we're going to calculate sales per working day with these constraints. The actual date table. This date table has dates that are not in the sales table. So we can already see there's a date before the range over here. And if we look all the way down to the bottom, the very last day that we sold something is 11-15-2016. Not only is that the last day, but we want to be able to add records. So the actual, if we up arrow, the date table goes all the way to 12-31-2018. Control Home. So there's definitely days here that are not in our sales table. We'll have to deal with that in our formula so that the report comes out correctly. In the sales table, there actually can be sales, like through the internet, on days that are not work days. So there you go. There's a non-work day, but we have some sales. Not only that, but there'll be some months with no sales, like December 2016. And we want our pivot table to automatically update when we get sales. And some months may not have been completed, like November. We saw that in our data set, November 16th was the last day we had a sale. And that's something we'll have to deal with in our formula. Now, we'll go look at the pivot table that we've started already. But our report, pivot table report, needs to show this calculation at the month, year, and grand total level. And we want one formula that will calculate the sales per working day for any of those time periods. Now, here is our pivot table we've already started. We have year, month, year, month, grand total. We have total sales. If we go over to our data model, Power Pivot data model, there's our fact table, our sales table. There's the date table. You could see that some of the columns have been hidden from the client tool. Of course, the date is one. There's exactly one day in each, but one to many, because on this side, we can have many sales on any particular day. If we go over to data view, we can see down here total sales. There's our simple measure. Now, if we go look at our pivot table, now, if we want to calculate working days, month, year, grand total, I want to build inside our formula a table that our calculation can iterate over. For a month right here, I need the table to be exactly 2014 March. When I get down here, I need the table to be 2015 March. But when I'm right here, I need all 12 months for the year 2014. And when I get down to the grand total, I need every single one of the months that have sales. So we're going to start off counting working days. But when we get to the heart of the formula, we're actually going to build an internal table using the cross-join function, which will change. That cross-join function will see the actual criteria from the pivot table flowing in and changing how many rows we see in that internal table. Now, before we do cross-join, let's just go and build the very first part that's going to try and count working days in the date table. That won't quite work, but that'll be our starting point. Let's go over to the data model. I'm going to click below total sales. Come up to the formula bar. I'll type number of work days, 
colon equal sign. Over in Excel, we use an equal sign. Over in Power BI Desktop, we use an equal sign. But over here, the assignment operator is colon equal sign. And then we want to use count rows. And we're just going to start by counting the DD. I see the date table highlighted, so I tab. Now, all that will do is count the actual number of days, close parentheses, and Enter. Alt-Tab. If I go over to our pivot table and drag number of work days, this is not going to work. But we could see, oh yeah, it's totally counting everything, even for months that don't have sales. The first thing we want to do is filter that calculation to count just work days. Alt-Tab. Well, the way we can alter the filter context is by using the Calculate function. C tab. That's the expression for our formula, comma, and we can build a filter right into this. DD, and I'm going to down arrow to Workday, tab, and I'm simply going to say, hey, are any of you equal to, in double quotes, Workday, in double quotes, close parentheses. Now, this won't work either, but it will tell us for any given month how many work days there are, even if it's in a year where we had no sales. Alt-Tab, we can see that is working. Now, we're, we'll get rid of all of these with an if function that will say if sales are greater than 0, then show otherwise blank. But notice down here, when we get to November 2015, that number 21 right there, number of working days, is not correct. Because in the data set, our last sale was made on the 16th. And that should be recording 10 days. And then, of course, the rest of these should be 0. So let's go back over to our measure grid. And this is where we need to start creating a table that we can copy down. And it will internally create a table we can iterate over with 1 month, 12 months, and grand total, and so on. Alt-Tab. Now, that formula right there, we will use internally inside our larger formula. Now, I don't want to create the next formula yet right here, because I want to be able to visualize different parts of the formula. And we can't visualize a table over here in the measure grid. So Alt-Tab, I have the add-in DAX Studio. You just go to Google, search for DAX Studio. It's a free download. When you install it in Excel, you simply click the button. It knows that we opened this from Excel, so there's the name of the workbook. I click Connect. I click over in the white area and Control and Roll. Now I can open up the tables and see the columns. This is where we need to create that internal table using cross-join. But in order to visualize the table over here, we have to use the Evaluate command. That will materialize a table over here in DAX Studio. Enter. Now we're going to use Cross Join, Down Arrow, and Tab. Now Cross Join does a Cartesian product where it takes two tables and it mul multiplies every row by every row. What we want to do is give it the year column and then the month column, two columns. And Cross Join will give us a complete list of all combinations. Now remember, we need this formula to see the filter context. That means as we copy down, see how many dates are there. So we'll use the values function. Values function will give us a unique list. So if I come over here and double click month, it puts the proper syntax, table name, and then square brackets or field name. Close parentheses. Values, as we copy down, for January 2017, it will give me January. But when I get to the year total, it will give me all 12 months. Now I want to multiply that comma times values of double click year. Now I'm actually going to reverse these. I did this in the wrong order. Control X backspace. Click right after the parentheses for cross join. Control V comma. Now, what's beautiful about this is, of course, the values will change as we copy down the pivot table, but cross join will create that table we need. Now, we're over here in DAX Studio, so I can click Run. And sure enough, there's no filter context here. And so we get every single combination all the way down to December 
2018. But of course, that will change in the pivot table. Now, let's prove that to ourselves over in our pivot table. I'm going to copy this. Remember, this gives us a table. Alt-Tab. And down here, we're going to start our formula. Count workdays colon equal sign. And I want to count how many rows there are in the pivot table as I copy the formula down. So I'm going to use count rows, control V. That's that cross join. Close parentheses. When I hit Enter, 84 total. Seven years times 12, I think, is 84. Hard to do without Excel. But that's the grand total. Alt-Tab, let's go over to our pivot table. I'm going to uncheck number of workdays and do count workdays. And look at that. That internal table, one row, one row. That will allow us to get a different total number of working days here for just a month. But if we have a table with 12 and we iterate our number of workdays formula over that, it will give us a table with 12 working day counts. And we'll use sum x to add. Not only that, but down here, of course, it will give us the total. Now we're going to have to do something to our formula to turn off when there are no sales. And the way we're going to do that is with an if function inside of sum x. Now let's go over to DAX Studio. Now I actually would like to format this. Watch this. I'm going to click after the open parentheses for cross join, enter tab. That's the first argument, the first table for us a column. Come to the end, enter backspace, enter, backspace, close parentheses. So I'm going to try to use the convention where the close parentheses for the function is lined up with the actual function. Now after evaluate, enter, sum x, tab, enter, and let me tab this in, backspace. So sum x needs a table, and that's the table. And notice that's a really cool dynamic table as we copy it down in the pivot table, comma. That's the end of the first argument, Enter. And now we want to do an if. Now our logical test as we iterate over this table is going to be are the total sales. And notice we are using a measure here. So tab, a measure has a hidden calculate function. And one of the important duties of the calculate function is to do context transition. Now, all context transition means is that the row context gets brought in to this measure as filter context. So remember, the row context would be for each row of this table. That means that total sales will know to calculate the correct total sales for each one of the rows in this table. Now, if total sales are greater than 0, and you might think if we're down in the 2016 year total, if I ask the question of that table, which is showing all 12 months, if I ask the question, how many of you are greater than 0, well, December will come out 0. So that table will end up getting whatever we put next, which will be our count work days, for each one of the rows, except for the last one, December, which will be blank. So that row will disappear in the table. So that's our logical test that we're going to iterate over that table, comma. What do we want if it's true? Square bracket. Number of work days. And this is also a measure tab. Any filter context will flow into that. Now, the beautiful thing about if over in DAX is if I leave the third argument off, it will default to blank, which is a substitute for Excel empty cell or a null value like in an SQL database. Enter, Enter, backspace, close parentheses on SOM X. Now, this is going to give us the correct working day count and it will remove all of the months that don't have any sales except for one cell. Now, let's highlight this and go try this. Remember, this is going to be our count. Copy, Alt-Tab. And now, instead of all of that, I'm going to highlight and Control-V. I hit Enter, 760. That's almost the correct grand total. Alt-Tab twice to go over to our pivot table. 
Now notice, it did a couple things here. It got rid of the months without any sales. All the way down, it's looking pretty good, including it got rid of December. That's the only one, because I think we only have 10 days or nine days in November that are actual working days. So we need to change that. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, that's a measure, and we can change the filter context by using the calculate function. Now, how are we going to know if all of the days in November from the date table are days we actually had sales? Well, we're not going to use the date table. We're going to use the F sales order date column. And what we'll do is we'll pick out, using the filter context, we'll pick out the very last day. And we'll say less than or equal to that. Now, Alt-Tab-Tab tab to get back to DAX Studio. After Evaluate. Actually, we don't need to evaluate anymore here, but because we're not evaluating a table. But let me show you. You can actually check if your measure is giving you the right answer over here. Enter, and we use the row function, open parentheses. Now, row creates a single row. You give it a name. I'm going to call it something like x, which is just a test comma. And there's the expression. We could actually run this, run, and there's our 760. We could have checked it over here. I'm going to backspace on the row, Enter, highlight all of the sum, tab, tab. Right here, I want to hit tab. And we want calculate. That's the function that can change the filter context for a given expression. Now, our first argument here, backspace. First argument to calculate is the expression. So I come to the end. That's the first argument, comma, Enter. Control and roll to zoom in a bit. Now, we would like to check, and I'll use the column over here, all of the D dates. And I'd like to say, please only use any of those dates that are less than or equal to. We're actually going to use an aggregate function here, max, to look through F sales. Actually, to look through, and I'll open up F sales order date. Now, remember, in the pivot table, as it copies down the the filter context will flow in, and the sales table from our date in the row area of the pivot table will be filtering the F sales for that particular month. For us, it would be November. Well, since the sales table is filtered down to November, and the biggest day there is 11-16-2016, boom, that's our new condition. Please look through the dates and further filter the date table with this max. That's close parentheses on max, enter, backspace, close parentheses on calculate, enter, backspace, close parentheses on row. And we could test it here. And sure enough, I remember I said that'll almost work. One great thing about this DAX Studio is it says max has been used in a true-false expression. And in fact, we only can use in calculate a single column with a comparative operator and a literal, like if we type the number here. But no problem. We can do this calculation right here inside of the filter function. Filter is an iterative function. I'm going to give it D date, comma. Filter will allow this to go through the entire D date column, which of course is filtered down to a particular month like November, and check to see only the dates that are less than the max date for November in the sales table. Close parentheses, and I should format this. Enter tab. There's the table. Enter, backspace, enter, backspace. There we go. There's filter. And now if I control and roll a little bit, I'm checking. I click right there. I see that. Let's click Run. And sure enough, 749. That is the actual number of working days for the grand total. Now I'm going to very carefully highlight everything from Calculate to the parentheses that lines up. Control C, Alt Tab. Right there, I'm going to highlight Control V and Enter. And there's our 749. There's our full formula, Alt-Tab, and there we go. There's the 10. Now we almost have what we want. We have total sales and count work days. We just need to divide the two. Alt-Tab, this one we can do over here. 
sales per workday colon equal sign. And there's a great function, divide. Divide takes a numerator and denominator. In the numerator, square bracket, down arrow to total sales. And remember that total sales has some, all the sales for that particular period, even though some of them are not for a workday, comma, square bracket, and there's our count workdays. Now, the great thing about divide, just like if function, is if we leave that third argument off, if there's an error, it will show a blank. Close parentheses and Enter. Let's format it. Drop down some number formatting, Alt-Tab. Now we have sales per working day. There we go. That is pretty amazing. And as we add new dates here, November will be updated. And as soon as we add December 2016, January 2017, when we refresh this, it automatically updates. And that certainly is a nice feature. If we think back to our formulas, we, have, we would have to actually show zeros here or you know, come over here and change this. So that's another advantage to using pivot tables and DAX for a calculation like this. All right, so we saw how to use a bunch of DAX functions to calculate sales per working day. All right, that's a bunch of fun with DAX. We'll see you next video.